Yes, my dear friends, we move on to property number three. And you can check it out over here as it is written on the board. It's reaction with protic reagents. Now, to begin with, what do you mean by protic reagents? Protic, it's related to what? Protons. Okay, H plus ions. And when we talk about protic reagents, the very first thing which we need to come into our mind, and that is about water. All right? So, we also call that a reaction with water. So, protic reagents, we talk about water. And whenever we talk about a reaction involving water, we also call it as what? Hydrolysis. What are we going to call it as? Hydrolysis. Right? Now, the rate of hydrolysis reaction with respect to organometallic compounds is related to the following factors. Factor number one, and that is, it depends upon the electropositive character of the metal. That's point number one. The rate of hydrolysis depends upon electropositive character of the metal. Point number two, it depends upon the polarity of the metal and the carbon bond. Of course, it is related only, my dear friends, because if greater is the electropositivity and greater than for it is going to be the polarity. Polarity is what? It's because the two of these elements are different, so electronegativity has to be different, and therefore there will be separation of charges. So greater the electropositivity of the metal, greater is going to be the separation of the charges, and greater is going to be the polarity. Okay, and the third part is about the associative tendency. It is what? The associative tendency, that is related to bonding, of metal alkyls. Of what? Metal alkyls. So these are the three factors, my dear friends, that you need to keep in mind whenever we talk about the extent of hydrolysis. All right. So now I give some specific examples involving H2O. So to start off with, we have first of all the most common organic reagent that we use. I hope you understood this. What am I talking about? Yes, it's N butylidium. Now I'm going to read this with water, so I write it down as HOH. All right, the bond between the H and the OH is going to break. The lithium is going along with OH. All right because carbon and lithium, the bond breaks, carbon ion results, the carbon ion will go with H+, plus, and as a result of which I am going to get butane, C4H10, and plus of course I will be getting what? Lithium hydroxide, that is LiOH, all right? Similarly, if I'm going to talk about a Grignard reagent, CS3MgBr, I treat this with, once again, with HOH, the bond breaks between H and the OH, Right. Next thing is the bond between the C and the Mg breaks. It results in the formation of a carbon ion. So obviously the carbon ion will be bonded with H plus and the OH will go with what? Magnesium. And as a result of which it results in formation of methane and we get Mg Br OH. Generally we write it down all in the straight line Mg Br OH. All right? But then it suggests that Br is going to be forming a bond with magnesium as well as OH. So that's what a misunderstanding is going to be there amongst the students. And therefore, to clear it up, I've written in this way. Okay, it's actually Br is being attached to magnesium and the OH is not attached to magnesium, my dear friends. OH is, uh, sorry, OH is not attached to bromine, my dear friends. OH is attached to what? Magnesium. All right, so this is a clarification of it. Next is, I can take an, another example of say B. This is boron having a valency of three. So I take it as C4H93, all right? I'm going to treat with HOH. So if I'm going to take only one molecule of water, so as a result of which it's the bond, for me, bond breaking takes place between H and OH, and the H is going to now go with only one of the molecules of C4H9, resulting in the formation of C4H10, and you get the side product, and that is B, C4H9 twice. Okay, this was tributyl boron. Okay, now it will become dibutyl boron, and plus, of course, you have OH. Okay, so this is what you get. 
So these are my different some of the reactions where we are going to involve the most prominent, the most common protic reagent and that is water which we also call it as a hydrolysis reaction. But my dear friends, as I say, water is one of the most prominent example of a protic reagent. It's not the only example. There are some other examples also. Other examples can be considered as uh, alcohol, especially the lower alcohols, the methyl alcohol, uh, cyclopentadiene, that is C5H6, hydrogen halide. So these are some other examples of protic reagents. So we'll take those examples as well over here. So let us talk about the lower alcohol and that is methyl alcohol. That is MeOH, we can write it down as. So I give you a reaction like B beryllium. Beryllium is an alkaline earth metal, so its valency is going to be two. So I'm going to talk about methyl, two methyl. So dimethyl beryllium, it's an organometallic compound. It is being treated with methyl alcohol, that is MeOH. All right, you know already how the bond formation is going to take place and the bond breaking is going to take place. So I'll show it this way. So the bond between Me and the OH is going to break. Now what happens over here is I have Be Me twice. Okay, but then see what happens is if I'm going to try to break this, as you say, because we have HOH here, if we try to go for MeOH, it is not going to happen that way. Because this is what generally is being talked about by many of the students. Okay, that the OH will go with beryllium and the methyl and the methyl will combine. How can it is possible, my dear friends? Okay, and some of them say, argue that, okay, the two alkyl groups are going to combine and results in a higher alkane. No, this is about protic reagents. So this is not the bond breaking, my dear friends. No. Okay, which is the bond breaking is? I'll show you. The bond breaking is this. This is the right bond breaking, not this one. Understood this? So what happens is I get a methoxy group. Okay, I don't get a methyl and a hydroxide. I get what? A methoxy group that is OME. Now, what is going to happen with that is there are two ME over here. Okay, or else I just make it much more simpler for you. And that is I write it down this way. Okay, so what happens is there is a bond over here. So only one of the bond is going to break. This ME now goes with H and you know what is going to happen is this is methyl group going with H. You got it right. It's methane. That is CH4. And what else we are going to get is BE, ME. Okay. And what else we have? BE, ME and then we have OME. Like this. Okay. This is what we get. Okay, so please be very careful and that's the reason I've showed you how the bond breaking and the bond formation reaction takes place. Okay, now similarly I can have Al, Me thrice because aluminium has a valency of 2, beryllium has a valency of, uh, sorry, aluminium has a valency of 3, so that's why 3 methyl groups. Here beryllium has got valency of 2, so therefore 2 methyl groups. Same reaction once again, Me, OH, the bond breaking is going to be this way. So now what happens is only one of the methyl is going to be combining with H plus and it results in the formation of CH4. So you guess it right now, whatever remains, that is going to be the major product and that is aluminium, A. There will be two Me, so Me twice. All right, and what else? What else you have? OME. Okay, you have OME. All right, so these are some of the reactions, my dear friends, with respect to what? Methyl alcohol, the lower alcohol, which is going to furnish what? Proton, because we are talking about proteic reagents. Okay, also one more example I gave you, if you can recall it, and that was about cyclopentadiene. So let us consider that. LiPH phenyl lithium is treated with C5H6. Okay, so it is going to furnish a proton. So the 1H from here goes to the phenyl group, that is C6H5, and you understand very well, my dear friends, and that is, it results in the formation of benzene. So we get over here C6H6, and of course, you know what we are going to get over here is Li C5H5. Okay, C5H5 is going to be a carbon ion, so it is going to combine with lithium, which is electropositive. So we get lithium cyclopentadiene ion, or cyclopentadiene ion lithium. Okay, this is what we get. So this also behaves as a protic reagent, as it is going to furnish what the proton.
all right so in the, under this particular category of protic reagents i first of all given you the example with respect to water then lower alcohol the best example is we are going to talk about is methyl alcohol okay and then i given you an example about cyclopentadiene okay there is also hydrogen alloy but before i discuss about hydrogen alloy please have a look at this and see whether you understand this completely Yes, my dear friends, we go into the next part and that is under the protic reagents, one more example I've given you and that was about hydrogen halide. Okay, so this general formula is going to be what? HX. I'm going to consider organometallic compound involving a highly electropositive metal. So that is LIR and I'm going to treat this with HX. Now when I'm going to consider a highly electropositive metal that is lithium, the bond breaking process takes place. This is the way it is going to be and because this H is going to furnish a proton so as a result of which this H will go towards R and the Li will go towards X. So you understood now what is going to be the product form. Yes, it's going to be LiX okay and you have RH. Okay, this is what we get. Now suppose if I'm going to consider our organometallic compound of a less electropositive metal. Okay, then what is going to happen? It's PbMe4, and I am going to treat this with say HX. Right? Then, same way this bond formation takes place. But because here, in case of lead, it's not that highly electropositive as compared to that of alkali and the alkaline earth metal. Of course, in group 14, it is the most electropositive element. But then comparatively it's less, so it's partial bond breaking between the carbon of the methyl and the lead. All right. So only one of the methyl group is going to be removed as a fragment. And that is going to go with H and it results in the formation of CH4. Okay. Now the remaining are PV, Me thrice. Okay, and what you have is X. So PB, ME thrice, X, and you get methane. So it's a partial breaking of bond between the carbon of the methyl and that of the lead. All right. Next example I want to give you is, and that is with respect to antimony. If I'm going to consider, say, SB, ME thrice, and I'm going to treat this with say H here. So what is going to happen is we have Sb Me thrice Cl2 with the hydrogen gas being released. So you can see over here antimony with the oxidation state of plus 3 now gets converted into oxidation state of plus 5. Okay, so there is an increase in the oxidation state and therefore we see there is a oxidation reaction taking place of antimony all right so SPME3 plus HCl so this is what we get the reaction as all right so this is something different as compared to the conventional ones but then when you talk about the another element of the same group to which antimony belongs to yes group 15 I'm talking about and that is going to be what bismuth so in case of bismuth the reaction will be triphenyl bismuth treated with HCl the bond breaking process as usual I had explained you before the bond breaking between the Bi and the phenyl rings and the Bi will go with Cl bismuth is much more stable in the plus 3 oxidation state because of the inert pair effect so I am going to get BiCl3 and plus of course you know what you are going to get is PHH so that means you will be getting what? Benzene so here it is going to furnish the proton so this is what I want you to understand is that with respect to hydrogen halides in most of the cases it does furnish a proton but in some cases it behaves in a different manner so that also I discussed with you with respect to antimony so where the oxidation state of antimony has increased okay from 3 to 5 
but generally this hydrogen halides will furnish the proton and as a result of which it gives you a reaction which is given it alkyl with that particular H plus ions and it will give you an alkane or in this case it will give you a benzene. All right. So my dear friends, this is all about the reaction of uh, protic reagents where we are basically talking about those reagents which are furnishing a proton which is all talking about the H plus ions. So we have taken example with respect to water molecule. We have also taken example with respect to the lower alcohols, then cyclopentadiene and hydrogen halide. Now here one more important thing which I want you to understand, please make a note of that and that is in a broader sense. When you talk about protic reagents, okay, it incorporates both the aspects, okay. So please try to understand that in broader concepts. What is that is, okay, when I talk about a protic reagent, okay, it's not always necessary that protic reagents are the one which is going to furnish a proton, which is going to give a proton. Okay, in certain circumstances, in certain cases, okay, because see chemistry is something which is very wide. Alright, so depending upon the concept which is being considered, accordingly we manipulate, okay, we try to modify the definitions. So here I just want to clarify that point and that is many times the protic reagent are also those reagents which have an ability to accept a proton. It's not always having a tendency to donate a proton, but sometimes it also has an ability to accept the proton. So that also concept is being incorporated depending upon which particular reactions we are talking about. So please, my dear friends, make a note of it. All right. So this is about property number three, and that is reaction with protic reagents. I'm sure, my dear friends, you have understood this very well.